sudden I could not, I could not see the officers any further. I could not see anyone. But I saw two unusual pers- personalities did appear right in front of my eyes. On my right hand side of the shoulder, I saw Jesus for the first time. On my left hand side of the shoulder, I saw the Holy Spirit for the first time. As soon as I saw them, the Holy Spirit starts to speak to me and he says, We have heard your conversation. We have decided to come and we have decided to show up in front of you. I think my Jesus wants to have a strong word. This is Charisma Connection on the Charisma Podcast Network. I'm Taylor Berglund, and today I'm really excited to welcome, over the phone lines, Dr. Reg Marias. Reg, how are you? Good, Taylor. Wonderful to speak to you. Wonderful to hear your voice. Well, it's great to hear from you as well. Are you calling all the way from Perth? Yes, I'm calling you all the way from Perth, Western Australia. The time over here is 19 minutes past 12. It's early in the morning hours, but I know it's in the afternoon for you guys. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So over here, it's like 11 a.m. in the morning. So we appreciate you uh, taking time out of your schedule to pull the night shift with us here. So for people who are not familiar with you, uh, you're the senior pastor of Living Faith Community Church in Perth, Australia. But I want to let you kind of share a little bit about your ministry and your story for people. Right, okay. Um, I think as you have just uh, mentioned to your, to your audience that my name is Rich, Rich Marais. I've been in this country in the, for the last 30 years or so, but prior to that, I think my life was not the life that I'm, that I'm enjoying today. I was born with an autism for 13 years of my life, and on top of autism, I had Asperger's, and on top of Asperger's, I also had um, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder behavior. Uh, so my, you could imagine very cl- uh, uh, clearly that the fact of the matter is that my life was just not normal at all. And until one day, 7th of June, 1982, I met Jesus um, in one of the biggest stadiums in Singapore through a crusade which was run by Dr. Yong Cho from South Korea. It was out of his meeting. I gave my heart to Jesus. One year down the track, exactly 7th of June, 1983, God healed me from my, uh, from my autism. Subsequently, then five years later, then God healed me from my Asper- from my Asperger's and my OCD. Yeah, I, I I think I often joke with my uh, with my congregation. I think they don't realize their their pastor was an ex mental patient who has been somewhat rather accidentally has been released out from the mental asylum and running everywhere like a monkey now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So recently you were talking about that you had an encounter with Jesus and the Holy Spirit at Perth International Airport. Can you talk to me a little bit about that and the groundwork for this encounter? Um, Yep, sure. Um, By the time that God decides to heal me in 1982, and after that, then he heals me in 1988 from my OCD and all of the above, um, I felt a very strong call of God on my personal life, and I felt that I should be entering into a Bible college, and so eventually at a tender age of, at the age of 20, I leave, I leave the place where I was born in Singapore, leave uh, Singapore, and then I enter into, into Perth, Western Australia, and, uh, and then I decide to undertake a four-year bachelor's degree, bachelor's ministry degree. Upon the completion of the bachelor's degree, I started to do itinerant traveling ministry within Australia and around the world. But somehow or rather, I found myself doing ministry that I could not find really exercise. Some of the miracles that I saw in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the scripture, eventually and subsequently, I felt very, very discouraged. And I say one, I remembered one day I did some ministry in different parts of the world. I saw my mom and, my mom and dad at the Singapore Changi, Changi International Airport, and I told my mom and dad I'm about to step down from my ministry. Obviously, I could see some tears coming out of my dad's eyes. Simply, he felt that I, he felt very strongly that what I was about to do is something very, very wrong, drastically wrong. However, I decided to leave uh, Singapore International Airport, took a flight from there into Perth. As soon, as soon as I got into Perth, I gave my two luggage bags to the customs officers, and the moment that was given, all of a sudden, it was like a time warp. There was a huge amount of like a cloud and all of a sudden, I could, not, I could not see the officers any further. I could not see anyone. But I saw two unusual pers- personalities did appear right in front of my eyes. 
on my right hand side of the shoulder, I saw Jesus for the first time. On my left hand side of the shoulder, I saw the Holy Spirit for the first time. As soon as I saw them, the Holy Spirit starts to speak to me, and he says, We have heard your conversation. We have decided to come, and we have decided to show up in front of you. I think my Jesus wants to have a strong word. It was during this encounter that I found Jesus face to face. One has to be honest. I did not know whether I'm supposed to scream, shout, yell, all of the above, because it was it was over the top for me, something that I've been asking from the age of 16 or 17, that can I see Jesus face to face? But it never, never happened. But it only happened in 1997, September, and when Jesus appeared for me the first time, and he started to, uh, started to ask me a number of questions in relation to why was I stepping down from the ministry. From that day onwards, I, uh, uh, that was this encounter. And out of this encounter with Jesus and out of the encounter with the Holy Spirit, that's where my ministry, my life, my entire perspective in serving God and serving His people started to change. So you have a supernatural encounter with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. He asks you questions. What do you say? Well, for starters, I think, uh, as I said, I think my palm of my hands was sweating. I was sweating profusely all over, and I did not know what to do and how to, and how to handle, finally, to see the, you know, what we call the divine. And he said to me, the first thing he said to me, I hear that you're about to step down from your work. And I, and I obviously said, yes, I am. But his countenance, the face, the face of Jesus became very, very extremely sad. And he said, why are you doing this? I said, I can't. I couldn't do anything. I could not do anything what you have done in the Bible, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I said, why should I do anything what you're asking me to do? It was during this time I saw a huge screen. And I remember 1997 plasma screen, LCD screen was not in a tech. We did not have that technology. We had only had 68 centimeter TVs all around the world. And I saw in the screen, and in the screen, that's where God showed me the, the huge continent of Australia. And he showed me how many percentage of the population are Christians who are going to go to heaven, and how many of them are actually heading towards Hades, or better known as hell. And it was during this time, at this encounter, it brought me to tears, and I realized that I have to do something about it. And I was still stunned, and I was still speechless, and I, I was overcame with emotion. I did not know what to do. But the entire time was amazing to see that the Holy Spirit was watching my behavior, my attitude, my countenance, all of the above. Here and there, I would say the Holy Spirit did, did, you know, did intervene. He spoke a few words here and there. But other than that, the majority of the conversation was held up by Jesus with me. Fifteen minutes, he actually spoke to me. But at the end of the 15 minutes, he finally said, you know, what do you want out of me? And I said, I just want to, I just want to do what you, what you call me to do. So, And it was during that encounter, he said, I will come with you with every single service, every single church service that you'll go to. I will stand beside a person. I will show their past, their present, and their future. I will give you the gift of word of knowledge. I will change you. For the next 15 months, I will do that. Eventually, exactly to his word, 15 months, he followed me wherever I went. But after that, after some time, 15 months later, he says, I no longer will be here, but I will send the Holy Spirit that was in 1997, and now today we are in 2018, and that's how this ministry has been functioning for the last many years. That's so cool. So for you, this whole encounter was really a confirmation of your calling and your anointing. Um, yes, Taylor, I would say it is. Um, I, I'm one of those guys who believe very strongly uh, having a, uh, you know, I'm, an half, I'm half Portuguese, half Indian, and so because of the pedigree mongrel that I've got possibly. I, I'm one of those guys who believe if you were to read the scriptures, if the scriptures can't do anything, then I think you and I have, and I have bought something which is not true. And so for me, the scripture is alive than ever. Jesus, Jesus, the book of Hebrews says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if that's the case, so then I need to see, experience whatever Jesus experienced, I should experience and today the Bible has become very real for me, and especially coming out of autism, coming out of Asperger's, coming out of a child who had, start, uh, who had, uh, who had, uh, who had stuttering problems. And uh, most important of all, I tried to kill myself at the age of seven, eight, nine by uh, pouring a uh, cockroach poison and rat poison into, uh, into the cordial juice that my mom used to give me uh, in a tumbler. I have drunk many times. I couldn't, I couldn't die. And I, subsequently, I tried standing in front of buses, trucks, 
cars so that they can run over me. Nobody taught me how to actually take my life. Nobody taught me uh, how to actually commit suicide. But I had suicidal thoughts, and I, I tried to suicide. I, I tried to commit suicide on so many occasions. I couldn't die. But I realize now, after so many years later, the hand of, in hindsight, the hand of God has been with me all all through my life. And every aspect of my life, he just, he just helped me, helped me, helped me all the way. And so today, if I'm alive, it's because of my Jesus. So I feel very strongly in God that all things are possible to those who believe in him. And that's where I've come from. If we have any listeners right now who are struggling with suicidal thoughts like you did, do you have any words of encouragement for them? Um, all I just want to say to those people who are listening to me and listening to you this, um, you know, uh, this afternoon or this morning in, in your time, can I encourage you? Um, you know, God, Bible says God is love, and um, Bible also says perfect love casts all fear. And what I found in 1982, on the 7th of June, when I gave my heart to Jesus through Yonggi Cho's ministry, the love of Jesus came and consumed all over me. Sure, I was not healed immediately out of my autism and also out of my OCD. But I can tell you right now, in the midst of all that illness and sickness I had, there was the peace of God which, you know, which went all over me, which really surrounded me, which really gave me a hope. The name Jesus actually gives you one thing and one thing alone, that you know, there is a life better than what you can think of and the life that God can give it to you. Bible says to me that I think in some in book of John chapter 10 verse 10, it says, uh, it says you, know, I, you know, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I have come to give you life and life in fullest abundance. And today I lead a full life. I'm married to a beautiful wife. I've got two beautiful, uh, two beautiful sons. Uh, you know, we've got a great church. Uh, you know, we have got about seven, six, five, 579 churches around the globe who call themselves Living Faith Community Church. With all these things which is happening around me, I can only say this to you right now, is if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, you will never, ever regret. I've never regretted. I did a decision 35, 36 years ago, and today I look at myself. I am actually living in the life, uh, in the land of uh, milk and honey is overflowing, and that's because the name of Jesus. If people want to find out more about you or your ministry, do you have a website? Is there somewhere they can go online? Yes, sir. Um, if, you want to, if you want to know more about me, then you can look at www.anointtheworld.com. Um, if you come into that, that will come directly. Or if you want to come through www.livingfaithcommunitychurch.com.au, uh, if you were to come through that, then you will know who I am, what I am, and how long I have been in the ministry. And today, the hallmarks of the ministry has been one. We are, you know, we have got a slogan. LFCC stands for where the impossible becomes possible. And so we have got a strong belief that if you come to a church, that you will see your illness, um, your difficulties, and all your perplexities has to leave simply because of the name of Jesus. All right. Well, is there anything else that you want to tell our audience before we head out? Um, yes, I'd love to tell one thing. Uh, I am coming down into your great nation, Taylor, uh, United States. Uh, I will be in the month of in, in the month of January. I will be in your Lone Star st- uh, State called Texas. Uh, I will be conducting a CS conference. We'll be over there, and uh, for the you know, for two days, we will actually be running uh, in uh, in Texas, and then obviously I will be in the state of Texas for one week. And then one week later, I will be in the state of Louisiana, and then I will also be running a two-day CS conference over there. Myself and my entire team will be there. And uh, what we want to do is in that conference is to bring signs and wonders and to bring healing to people who need, who need to receive healing. And so we are really pumped. We are really excited to come into your, uh, into, into your great nation and to bring the word, but not only to bring the word, but to bring the word in power demonstration, but on top of it, the love of Jesus through the cross of Calvary and the work of the Holy Spirit. Well, that sounds fantastic, and we definitely recommend that our listeners go check that out. Uh, Reg, it has been fantastic talking with you today. It's really been an honor. Um, Would you mind closing us out with a prayer? Yep, no problem, Stella. Father, we thank you for this wonderful morning in the United States. We give you praise and thanks, God. We thank you for Taylor. We thank you for Charisma. 
We ask of you right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we pray. We ask of you people who have got different, different perplexities and problems and they've gone through. We ask of you this morning, God, that you, your hand will come, your hand will touch. Something that you did powerfully in my personal life, something that you are currently also doing in my personal life, we now stretch our hands across the entire nation of the United States. We pray for its inhabitants and for its citizens. We also pray for President Donald Trump, God. We know that your hand is upon that man himself. We give you thanks and praise, God, that you'll honor your people, you'll touch your people. We pray, God, there will be a massive healing, God. People who need to know Jesus will come to know in Jesus, God, the great move of God, a great revival to come into this nation. We also want to thank you right now. Bible says that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, God, one who's able to able to undertake us in our personal life, God. We thank you. We want to submit our life, God. We know for the for we know when you di- when you died on the cross of Calvary through your precious blood, God. One has been totally redeemed from the kingdom of darkness and then to be put into the kingdom of light. Today we can call ourselves, God, as children of the Almighty God, Abba, Father, God, according to the book of Romans. We thank you. We ask of you in the name of Jesus, God. Release this anointing. Release your presence, God. Release this wonderful power of Jesus, God, through the third person called the Holy Spirit as he ministers to every single person, as he ministers to every single listener who's listening. Give them hope, God, the hope that you gave it to me but the hope now will be given to this 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 other this upcoming generation god where they will know jesus personally as their lord and savior we thank you for this marvelous interview we pray we ask of you right now we surrender ourselves at the feet of jesus for this for this morning we thank you for everything you've done in jesus name we ask and we say amen amen you've been listening to dr reg morias on charisma connection here on the charisma podcast network I'm Taylor Berglin, and thanks for joining us. This has been a production of the Charisma Podcast Network. Steve and Joyce Strang are the founders and owners of CPN. Dr. Steve Green is the executive producer of the Charisma Podcast Network. We intend to honor God with every podcast and remain thankful to our advertisers and supporters who make these podcasts possible.